Welcome to the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, where there's always another secret. Welcome back, Sixers, to another episode of the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies. This is episode 94, and today is October 12th, 2021. That is a day later than we would normally record. We had some other obligations that needed to be fulfilled, but we are here tonight, and we are ready to have a discussion. I am Bill, and I am joined, as always, by my aristocratic co-hosts, Amy and Jordan. Welcome, guys. Hello. You. If you'd warned me, I would have gotten a crown, but, you know, they're somewhere else. <laughs> This is more uh, refined. This isn't royalty. This is aristocracy. Oh, well, so, you know, crowns are cool, though. Before we get started, we want to remind our listeners that the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies is not a spoiler-free podcast. That means if there's something in the Cosmere that you haven't read and you're worried about hearing spoilers, you might want to go read those first, then come back and join in the discussion. Tonight, after several weeks covering the Reckoners, we are back in the Cosmere and back on Roshar, We'll be talking about Sprint Society, how they interact with each other in Shadesmar, and other such related things. For those of you who listen to the podcast recordings or watch the videos on YouTube, we'd like to remind you that it's possible for our listeners to interact with us live via chat as we record each episode at www.twitch.tv slash innkeepers table. We record episodes every other Monday night starting at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. So please join us and take an active part in the show. The Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies is made possible by the support of our listeners and patrons. The show will, of course, continue to be free, but if you want to help us out, head on over to patreon.com slash Cosmere Studies. Even a buck or two per episode would really help us out as we work to continue to improve the show. Patrons get immediate access to our Discord channel where you can talk about the show and the Cosmere with other listeners. Um, we've got a great dis uh, community. We've got some great discussions. And you'll also get early access to bonus episodes, exclusive access to other bonus content, and other good stuff. So, guys, Sprin. Yes. Who are they? What do they want? What motivates them? What is this cognitive realm we keep talking about? So I don't know. The thing, that, the thing that's really interesting to me about the cognitive realm is it really feels like Brandon's kind of taking his own spin on the fey realm. Um, you know, in a lot of classic fantasies, they'll have the fey where, you know, you enter a circle of mushrooms and you end up in the fairy world where... The underhill or whatever. Yeah, the underhill or... Yeah. Um, did, did either of y'all get that sort of feeling or I, I didn't make that connection, but now that you mentioned it, I'm like, yeah, I can definitely see how it's comparable in some ways. I'm not as super familiar with the Fae as a concept, just cause I don't tend to mm -hmm. read a lot of fantasy, especially more right. traditional fantasy. But, um, I, I just liked it as the idea of Brandon trying to come up with a different fantasy world and the mechanic of the three realms Mm -hmm. of sort of mind, body, and soul, sort mm -hmm. of being a, a guide. And it's definitely a very interesting concept, especially here in Roshar, where the the cognitive realm is so close to the physical realm. Uh, mm -hmm. The fact that we see Spren on both sides here. Um, yes. The, like, one of my favorites was the image of the, the fear Spren. Like, whenever you see them, they, you know, it, like, it's these weird fanning things. And when they see them in, uh, in the actual cognitive realm, it's like the antenna of these creatures that sort of look like the yip monsters from uh, Sesame street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, Brandon has described Roshar as just the wall between the physical and, uh, and, and cognitive realms is kind of thin. And so stuff kind of leaks through. Yeah, and it's um, it's funny and looking at some of the drawings and it looks like they're like sticking their tongue up and like kind of flicking it around whenever you the people see spren in. Well, um, like with the uh the so anger spren where you see the these pools of blood is what it looks like and then on the other side it's actually their their saliva dripping down and like of these just fearsome looking creatures. They're and, scary. 
Well, it's just interesting with because he goes with the idea of things. And mm-hmm. so when you sit there and you have a lot of leeway like that, you have things like Star Spren, which on physical realm side or so you know they sort of flit about and almost look like smaller stars but mm-hmm. we get to see one on that side and it's this giant hulking beast right and so um, now it's just i like how it's not it's not exactly tethered right mm-hmm. now all of that said we are um going to be focusing mostly this episode on what the storm father refers to as true spin true spren or sapient spren yeah um specifically the radiant spren mm-hmm. um, so high, so, you know, high spren or i guess they have a couple no high spren is a is a specific order of radiant spren oh goodness this is gonna be so confusing so tell. You know, sap- sapient spren <laughs> tends to be the term that i've, I've seen bandied okay. about referring yeah. or radiant spren and uh if you are normally audio only you might want to consider the youtube today because we actually brought uh we brought images of the various spren yeah, so these are the images that were in Rhythm of War in Shallan's notebook. Mm-hmm. Um, because as she traveled through, she took very detailed notes. And so, the, and it's just one of those things where the art in the, the Stormlight books adds additional stuff to the lore because you see notes along the side and, and other stuff. But this is, these are some of the best depictions of these Radiant Sprint that we've ever gotten. Yeah. So, um,. But yeah, so when referring to them, though, the Stormfather said, there are no foolish oaths. All are the mark of men and true spren over beasts and subspren. The mark of intelligence, free will, and choice. So first, let's just talk about the general society of spren. Because on, on the, phys- in the physical realm, spren are really typically these, I mean, they're diluted versions of themselves. Mm-hmm. I mean, when even the sapient sprint come over to the physical realm, they lose memory. They lose a lot of themselves if they don't have the nail bond. Yeah. Um, and you see it several times with Syl mm-hmm. when she um, is too far from Kaladin or Kaladin mm-hmm. has slipped on an oath or anything else. Then she becomes much more like a wind sprint. Right. Or when when Pattern first appears um, mm-hmm. and, you know, Shallan's studying him. And I think the word she actually uses was imbecilic, wasn't it? It could be. It was, I, it's where, been long enough. I don't remember where he'd exactly. like climb up a wall and then slip down and then climb up a wall and slip down. And, mm-hmm. and so they're, 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 they're not their complete versions of themselves. I, I don't usually like using the word, but it mm-hmm. almost feels like they're lobotomized a little bit that they're not a little bit, a little, yeah. they're not all there. Well, mm-hmm. and it may, and it makes sense because they're creatures of, of pure thought. And so coming over into right. a physical realm, it would make sense that they, that some of who they are, gets a little lost in in that translation because mm-hmm. uh, yeah. you, you almost it's almost like uh, moving from you know 3d to 2d for them well kind of right. literally in the case of pattern um <laughs> yeah and so it's it's just interesting that you just you lose something in that translation and you have to sort of reorient yourself to to get right. to get where you were again mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so but we're mostly talking about sprint society in the cognitive realm, because that's yeah, where their yeah. society, that's where their culture has been built up. That's, yeah. you know, where they've actually, you know, there are cities, there are cultures, there's trade routes, there's all sorts of stuff on. There's domestication the, of lower spread yeah. on the other side. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then there's manifestations and art and gardening based on um, things that are in the physical realm. You know, th- there's just all sorts of really interesting stuff mm-hmm. that comes so first off um it one of the first things that we learned about the cognitive realm is that land and ocean are essentially inverted where there's yeah. land there's the sea of beads and where there's water there's typically a solidified um almost it feels kind of I, I remember it being more like glass kind of an almost like an obsidian almost it's yeah 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 well and i love the re like someone asked brandon one time i couldn't find the word of brandon like why mm-hmm. is that and, and as he explained uh the way humans live water are borders there are these solid things yep. that you can't you can't move they, they stay there whereas land is the the mutable thing because we change it all the time mm-hmm. and so and so water it because the is the actual substance that you can move on in there because it's the solid concept because people think the this river is- 
this is the and water. Just, this is this yeah, is and the lake, and well, and, and it ocean, doesn't it doesn't else. matter whose perspective you're looking at. That you know maybe the river has a different name depending upon the culture or even the people looking at it. But that river mm-hmm. is still a river, whereas the land, you get a lot of really Changes. different interpretations of what the land is, how you're going to mm-hmm. use it, and stuff. So it's just not as solid. It's interesting though because, for example, sea life. Um, tends to float up up above this solidified um, version of the river, you know, because you can actually see the uh, the souls, as it were. Yeah, they glow a little brighter. But but they they float over the top of these islands, and and so the Spren settlements are on these these waterways. Yeah. These peninsulas, these isthmuses, these islands, the you know, and it's it's really interesting. One and the first glimpse we actually got of that, it didn't really show up in we we didn't really have any specifics on it in the Way of Kings, but when the Way of Kings first came out, uh, they also it came with a giant bookmark, and on one side there was a map of Roshar, and on the yeah. other side there was a map of Shadesmar. Mm, we didn't true. know what Shadesmar was at the time. But we had this map that was clearly an inverse of of uh, of Roshar. It was really an yeah. interesting looking thing. Well, it's interesting. Okay. The other thing that's interesting about that is it means islands are actually lakes on the other side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and vice versa. Yeah. The uh, mm. the other thing that's very interesting about like traveling this way is the fact that people do tend to travel alongside rivers in, you know, especially in, you know, these day or these times in these books. And mm-hmm. so it was interesting. We saw it in secret history of all places um, was Kelsier was traveling along the river just as he mm-hmm. would have, you know, back on the other side. It's just one's a walk. The other was on a barge. Well, and part of that is because with the river, it helps you to keep your orientation. You know, if you're going West, um, you're not going to loop around on yourself, but like, I mean, the river could, you know, turn back, but as long as you stick to it, you're making progress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the, the other interesting thing about just the fact that this flips is the fact that you see these things where there's the ideas of something is on the other side but then there's mm-hmm. there's actual little plant life in in the cognitive realm. Yes. And it, it starts kind of growing. And it's like what is like we he's we do they dwell Kelsier dwelled on it a little bit in secret history, and I believe Shalon dwelled on it, or it might have been Adolin, I can't remember which. But they dwelled on it a little bit in one of their viewpoints. But right. uh it's just the constant, like, what does it feed on? Because it's not, clearly not feeding on water. There is no yeah. water. That's literally mm-hmm. part of the problem for humans going into this realm is they have to figure out how Shitty to water. get water. Well, to be fair, in Shadesmar, the laws of physics are a little bit different. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, so, and, and so that's what's interesting about it is what what is this thing feeding off of? It's probably feeding mm-hmm. off some idea or something, but it's the seed of an idea. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's just okay. weird. Okay. Everything changes when you don't have natural resources. Yeah. Okay. So in Shadesmar, though, um, while there are the various types of, uh, of sapient spren and cultures, they do interact with each other. You know, there are cities like Celebrant where mm-hmm. various spren of all different types will gather. Um, and I think it's interesting. One of the first things that we, we learn is that stormlight is currency. Yep. On both sides. Um, like there's, there's not really a way to gather stormlight in the cognitive realm and it dissipates very quickly. And so th- if you take your spheres to money lenders, they'll issue. And so it's like, it's the gold standard, but it's stormlight standard because <laughs> they, they issue notes saying this is how much money you have. And you can spend it that way. Well, it's all currencies always backed up by something. If it's a gold right. standard, it's backed up by a physical thing. If it's a fiat currency, it's backed up by the power mm-hmm. of the government behind it. Um, right. And in this universe, it's sort of backed up by the usefulness of it. 
because you can use Stormlight to manifest on the other side, the stuff mm-hmm. on the other side. Yeah. And so it's it's almost as if we using, I guess the equivalent in our universe would be oil or something mm-hmm. like that. Something that's the, that's the, what produces the energy is the currency. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'd, you'd, I'd almost say like if we had a, um, a, a reliable engine that ran on, a, on alcohol, because alcohol evaporates quickly. Mm, okay. And so, because that's the other thing is, particularly in Shadesmar, Stormlight is a very, very fleeting thing. Yeah. Yeah, unless, um, you, unless you have perfect gemstones like that we saw in Rhythm of War. Which mm-hmm. they apparently have several of in Shadesmar. Um, you mean Oathbringer was the poet? No, no I meant in uh, Rhythm of War. Uh, we saw several. Oh, rhythm, of sorry, them. I was thinking. Sorry, I, words of radiance and rhythm of war. I get them backwards because they're the they reverse are of each other. And, yeah. War and round. but yeah, we saw that in uh, oh, what was it? Uh, I forget the name of the high sp- or the honor spread city. What is it? Lasting oh. integrity. Lasting integrity. Lasting integrity. Yeah. Lasting integrity. Yeah. Because we saw the the heist uh, pattern and uh, Shalon pulled, faking an mm-hmm. injury. And learning well, that honor spren don't have much concept of what a lie is. <laughs> well, and they're also um, in celebrant because when they disembark from the uh, the reacher ship, they trade in their spheres. Yeah, to the so that cultivation to, to spren that was there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So speak. Let, let's talk a little bit about celebrant because there there are several cities in Shadesmar. One which is very, very Cosmere important, but we don't necessarily know how, like whether it's actually in Shadesmar or just somewhere else in the cognitive realm, is of course Silverlight. But we know very little about that, and we're talking more specifically about Sprint, so we're not going to go too deep into that one. But yeah. one that we do see a bit of is Celebrant. Um, so this is in uh, Southeast... El- uh, this corresponds with a place in Southeast Alethkar. Elica- um called the sea of spears and on uh and so on the cognitive side of it they've built a city called celebrant and it's kind of a trade hub Mm -hmm. um now before everything started happening with this true desolation going on it was a free city state you know ruled itself um but now it's kind of been taken over it's uh, militarized a little bit, and oc- it's occupied. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite um, things about that occupation is the fact that, you know, so they're being ruled over by a uh, fused, basically. But yeah. it's in wh- one of the first things we see is as we deal with stuff is sort of Spren society in general seems very literal um, in most cases mm-hmm. um, because they're there are these concepts of something. And so they tend to have one way of viewing things. It, it does seem a lot more uh, homogenous between members than it does mm. for the, the physical realm races. It reminds me of a sentence in the book, Peter Pan, where it's referring to Tinkerbell because she, it says she's very small. And so she only has one room, has room inside of herself for one emotion at a time. And, you know, that's just sort of how Sprint kind of are is because they are very distinctly specific concepts. In a sense, it's a, a microcosm of the shards of Adenalsium. Well, I mean, that's literally where, what they are. Yeah. Yeah. And so except that the Spren on are Rosh are on Roshar and they're tied directly to the shards that are the Roshar and shards. Yeah. Roshar and shards. Say that three times fast. <laughs> wow. Um. But no, it's and so yeah, it's just, you're right. It is each culture tends to be a lot more, more homogenous. Although there are some exceptions. Yeah. Well, I mean, Brandon loves using that as a storytelling device. Is mm-hmm. he he gives us the exception rather than the rule? The exception and, that demonstrates the rule. Yeah. Yeah, because we saw that with Seize, we see it with Sil, we see it with we see uh, it with Tinsoon. Uh, uh, oh my goodness, Ebony, as well. Ebony. Uh. Or ivory. Uh, ivory. Sorry. <laughs> and the two yeah. live in perfect harmony. So. Exactly. <laughs> no. And, it's and also so, kind of interesting. There's there's so few children in, like, you don't see any 
children's spren either like they're they're all very long lived because they're concepts too so mm-hmm. there's not as much changeover and new ideas because it seems to be more often than not when you have lots of new generations and things, then things evolve more that way. But it seems like Spren don't do that very often. Yeah. Right? The, yeah. the other thing that was interesting about that is they're sort of, because they're so literal minded, it can be a little frustrating for physical races to deal with them. Uh, Cause I remember like when they're trying to hide from, uh, the the fused in the city and they go to the the lady who's in charge of the docks they're like why didn't you tell us there are more morals who show showed up and it was like we told you to you know tell us and she's like i don't understand why everyone keeps assuming i would know things (laughs) like people need i need information and it's just because they don't infer things as much because that inference is a is a very abstract concept and I think it's telling that other spren call cryptics lie spren. Um, oh, because they because have a little more nuance. They well, it's because they're like, what do they look like? They they they're these mathematical constructs. That what I think the most correct name for them would actually be abstraction spren. They mm. they like the ideas of things being abstracted out. Mathematics is an abstraction of reality, and and how things behave. Lies are an abstraction of how people talk and we infer Mm. things and a lot of things that they say, Ooh, that's a good lie. It's not a lie. What it is, is an abstraction that we intimately understand when we say something's cool. That's an abstraction. That's shorthand for something else. But the idea of this shorthand is very foreign to them. Mm -hmm. And so they don't trust, they don't trust like, cause it's, it's clear that, cryptics tend to keep to themselves because the other races don't tend to like them as much. Yeah. <laughs> and it's because I think it's because of this obsession with abstraction sets them apart from the other concepts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So let's look into some of these specific um, orders of sprint. So I'm going to start with honor sprint because one, that's one of the ones we know the most about Two, That's what mm-hmm. sill is. And then I'm just going to follow down the line of, uh, just along the path of the connected orders. So, mm-hmm. you know, you know, the ones that share surges. So it's like wind runners to sky breakers to dust bringers to, you okay. know, along that line. So we'll just look at the sprint in that order. So let's okay. start with wind runners. Um, so wind runners have a couple of cities that we've, we've heard their names of. Um, the, the main, the one that we've seen is lasting integrity um, mm-hmm. where a lot of the shades, Mars stuff, in rhythm of war took place yeah they they it's tend to trippy. name things in things that are very similar to uh, the covenant in halo very long-winded hmm. highfalutin names but it's also because the other city that we get the name of is unyielding fidelity which is, it seems very you know lasting integrity unyielding fidelity it's basically the same concept yeah it's and a different it's, angle it's... on that concept but it, it's very much talking about honor and like describing honor kind of it feels unbreakable like. yeah honor it also reminds me a little bit of the uh oh i can't remember what they're called the the koala guys in um schlock mercenary the oben they're, i haven't read the I oben you know because like the, their ships are like the sealed of a the, 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 the sword of eternal justice and you know so. Man, but, I have not uh, thought about that in forever. I haven't either, but it ju- it just sort of came to mind. Um, but lasting integrity is really interesting because from outside it looks like just a really tall tower, mm-hmm. and inside you're basically living in Inception or one of those like art things that I can't even remember what the guy's name is, where like everything MC is twisting Escher. and like yes, an Escher painting, yeah, yeah, which oh, it's just making me feel weird to look at him too long. It's a, uh, it's, it's almost like it's not a toroidal city, but it's uh, the same thing where the whole thing is just sort of folded up on itself. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's one of those things. One, one of the surges that they they provide is gravitation, and so yeah. to them, it's almost like the concept of where the wall is. That's a walkable surface, mm-hmm. and it has its own, yeah. all, its own gravity that you're sort of bonded to. And mm-hmm. it makes sense that Shalon's sitting here trying to figure out where the zero G parts of these things are. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and Brandon and they, has actually said that it's not surge binding, but it is due to the longstanding presence of the, uh, the, honor, spread. the honor spread. Yeah, because it, 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 these ideas have a power unto themselves in, the, mm-hmm. in this world. But I, I love the idea of Shalon sitting here trying to find the zero G part and the honor spread are sort of just shaking their heads like, what is the stupidity? <laughs> and... But it's because Shalon wants to know, okay, where does the rule break down? Whereas the honor spren don't really care where the rule breaks down. It's mm-hmm. like it's just the you know the gravity's the gravity. Quit trying to quit right. trying to figure it out. This is how it is. Don't worry about the why. You'll mess things up. It <laughs> just is. Well, and the thing is, if you do enough of it, you actually might be able to mess it up if you got enough people doing it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the honor sprint have kind of a very militaristic tradition, very honor bound, very focused on oaths. Um, and they have a high, high regard for the uh, Stormfather's bondsmith, a.k.a. Dalinar Kalin, mm-hmm. um, because they see the Stormfather as their progenitor, as their father, as it were. Like for for them, Stormfather is a more literal term yeah term except that was part of the problem in rhythm of war was adolin is trying to come in and appeal to that authority mm-hmm. and they're sort of like oh we don't know if we can trust this well it's a it's a really interesting concept because basically what they're doing is they're so tied to their idea that they're abandoning the principles upon which that idea was based because they don't want to let go of that idea. Hmm. Yeah. It's, it's interesting because, because it's, they're becoming more human is the problem is everything's, mm-hmm. everything's fine when you don't have to deal with the nuance of things. Um, but, but most, most theories in general of, of human to human interaction are perfectly fine until, you know, the rubber meets the road and you're and, like, Oh, there's a lot of shades of gray here. <laughs> and of these spren, these these sapient spren, the honor spren do tend to be the most human-like in their manifestation, as it were. Mm. I've used as it were too many times. I, I apologize. <laughs> I will try to stop. Ergo. Ergo. Vis-a-vis. <laughs> if you will. Um, but the other thing that's interesting with honor spren... Of course, we have Syl. She is the honor sprint that we know the best. Mm -hmm. There are others that we also know and are amused by, like Rua. But Syl is the one that we have kind of grown up with since the very beginning of the first book. And she is special among honor sprint because she is what they refer to as the ancient daughter. Um, Mm -hmm. Essentially, I think she was the only... Honor Sprin who really survived the uh, the recreants, correct? I think so. I think that's the, the implication because her previous she uh, was so, she was sort of in hibernation. Yeah. When uh, when, when it, it all happened. happened because her her knight had already died. Yeah, there were no O's that were broken with her. Mm-hmm. And so there was like a second generation of Honor Sprin that the Stormfather created after the recreants. Mm-hmm. Um. And so she's kind of looked upon as a princess, for lack of a better term. But she's also, they, they see her as the willful princess who, she's like, no, you're doing it wrong. You need to come back. You need to sit in your tower and you need to be, you know, just, just, just do as you're told. Safe and contained and it'll be fine. And it's like, yeah. Well, they, it's, it's, they it's, the, it's the, the tyrannical parent idea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the well, gilded cage. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just the issue of they're so worried about the bad thing that could happen. And this is true for a lot of the the various societies that they're not thinking about what they're missing out on because they won't take that mm-hmm. risk. Right. Because, again, risk is a very abstract concept. The concept of what <laughs> could be as opposed to what is. Yeah. Yep. Um, we also saw some of their legal proceedings. Um, they're kind of complex. The um, kangaroo court. 
Yeah, we, we I don't want to go into too much of it because basically everything we know is clearly lined out in the book. Yeah. Um, but I, I do think it's interesting that the defendants are always required to represent themselves no matter what. They can have legal counsel, but they still are the ones who are representing themselves. It feels very, like, since they're honor sprint, it feels very, like, you, you'd want to represent yourself because it's more honorable to do that. So it, it fits with what I see. Well, and though. more concrete, because mm-hmm. representing someone else, that is abstract. Yeah. At the same time, I mean, it's, a, it's a legal proceeding that by its very nature favors the prosecution over the defense. Because Absolutely. the prosecution is, gets to be super experienced and do this all the time. The defense is, mm-hmm. unless you're it's somehow doing chance. this all the time, you have no way to defend yourself. Yeah. Yeah, there's an episode of Star Trek Deep Space Nine where one of the characters is um, tried by the Cardassians. And the Cardassians' assumption is, you are guilty. We're just determining your sentence at this point. Oh, the fact that I you've forgotten. been accused means that you're guilty. And it's just a... It it's kind of feels similar to that. Mm. Like they're yeah. going in with a very, very strong preconception. Yeah. Speaking of going in with strong preconceptions, though, let's move <laughs> on to the next order. Highspren. The Highspren. So we don't know oh, yeah. a whole lot about the Highspren, but they are Freaking. very, very rigid. What are you and talking kind about? Kind of scary. No, they're awesome. I love the high spread. They're great. Conceptually, they're they're really cool, but they're terrifying. Yeah. What you don't like just walking holes in reality? No. <laughs> Showing starlight. I I'm trying to figure out what we're looking at. Yeah, I don't. That's crazy. My my theory is they actually are holes in reality, and what they're actually showing is a view past the. The material and into the star fields beyond. Hmm. Because 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 the stars don't move with them as they move as the the notes talk about in the the picture that's being shown now. Mm. But yeah, because because on the in the physical realm they look just sort of like slits in the sky and there's stars on the other side, but in the cognitive realm they are basically people shaped voids. Yeah. With, with clothes, too, kind of. Like, there's that yes. line of clothes. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I said, they're very, very strict and inflexible, which actually makes them a perfect match for the Skybreakers oh, because yeah. that's what the Skybreakers are all about. Mm-hmm. Um, Along with the hokey pokey. <laughs> and apparently they're the ones who decide when a Skybreaker has accomplished their crusade, which is the fourth ideal. So it'll be really interesting to see... Because, you know, at the end of Rhythm of War, Zeth sets out on his crusade. Um, and we yeah. only had one scene with him and his high sprint, who we don't have a name for yet, I don't believe. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember think. hearing a name. Do we know what the, they are supposed to be the ideals of? Like, what a high sprint's the concept of? I'm guessing law or justice, maybe. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Or authority, maybe? I, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's it's just... I, there's a few of these that we know their names and stuff, but we don't quite know what their concept of. Because mm-hmm. the, yeah. the honor spren, it's pretty clear. It's clear. In the name. Yeah. Cultivation spren, same thing. Yeah. But things get a little wonky with some of these other ones. Right. Yeah. Um, they, uh, they do apparently have a, a strong respect for Nail, though, which... Again, Nail is the exception among the heralds because he's the only one who actually joined his order. Yeah. So it's you know it's interesting that because they typically they, they're basically only going to bond somebody that he's brought before them and said okay he's he's cool to bond. Yeah, it's interesting. And the other thing that's interesting that kind of sets them apart from a lot that we've seen is. They don't bond a skybreaker until after that knight has sworn the second ideal. Which, you know, that's where, uh, you know, in, in, in other orders, that's kind of far along. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's it's the difference. They sort of want to see the commitment first, and then they'll they'll nurture the bond. I, I'm still trying to process exactly how it works, though, because for example, you start to manifest your abilities to surge bind as you you know as, as you uh, as the bond forms, correct? Yeah, normally, I, what, yeah. From everything what I'm wondering seen. is if there's some sort of group approach to these things that if you're not bonded to a specific spren yet, what you're bonded to is more of a committee of them. Okay, I, I, see, I'm thinking it might be more of a they only bond you if you've been a squire. It could be that as well. It's hard to know because yeah, the, the we, other we problem just haven't is. Seen as much. I mean, mm-hmm. we only even know, like, the only one that's even named is the one that uh, one of the Skybreakers had. We know her, her sprint was named Winnow, which is an interesting name. Hmm. But that's the only one that we know of. That actually kind of makes sense, because Winnow as in winnowing down, meaning cutting off the dross. Yeah. Yeah. Which, Purifying, what's, what's, perfecting. What's, well, it's, what's, the, what's their, in? they were the judges. Like, their mm-hmm. job was to separate, mm-hmm. like, this, the, the Skybreakers. Right. And so yeah. it was the whole idea and the reason they trust nails. What was nail nail is the judge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he was viewed as one of the most honorable men. Yeah. I could see one being called cleave. It just feels like a fun sprint name. Now they don't show up in like in celebrant. There's not a lot of high sprint, if any that we know of. No, they're, um, they're but- the most isolationist, I believe. But it sounds like Yasna, when she was traveling through Shades Marsh, she did um, consult with them on a few things. So there's speculation among some people that they do have their own settlements somewhere. Hmm. Um, so, you know, because they do seem to, to group together. It's not like you have a bunch of just wandering uh, high, high spread just sort of doing just their own really. thing. So there's probably some sort of settlement for them somewhere. We just don't know anything about it. Mm-hmm. So. No, I'm All right, ve- so- very interested in the next book because I've, oh, I've, been, absolutely. Wanting, I've been wanting to know about these spren and <laughs> we're going to be getting something from it. I mean, just that scene with uh, with Zeth at uh, it's at a tree, isn't it? Like he's, he's by a tree when it when he goes to speak yeah. to his high spren and uh just seeing that it's just like oh 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 this is juicy tidbits this is interesting stuff very juicy I'm, tidbits i'm not sure texas blade in chat says didn't they try to take over shades more i don't recall this i don't but know either i i'm not positive on that i don't want to give false information and i'm not sure about enough about that to to comment on it um Okay, so the next step would be Ash Spren. Okay. These are my favorite for the record. Oh, really? Just the look of them? Oh, or? yeah. The, their look is so cool. Because <laughs> well, the concept, as they move around, the, their, bo- like, their body has almost got this sandy structure to it. And like it will reveal like the, the skeletal structure underneath as they move. And they're, like, they have a rude gesture as Shalon the yeah. thing where they like wipe their mouth their lips and which removes their lips temporarily and shows like hmm. the skeletal sneer so it almost seems like i bite my tongue or i bite my thumb at you but exactly like, i was thinking the exact of same thing instead or the uh the yeah yeah I no, that's bite interesting my thumb at you sir yeah the, the showing you the bottom of your of your shoe it's just sort of yeah like, I, I show you i show you my my jaw yeah, and so this is another one. I have no clue what what they're supposed to be the concept of because they they lean heavily towards the ash idea, but they got to be some sort of concept that I don't fully understand just yet. Hmm. But I, we know, I, I we mean, know the Dustbringers are about self-mastery. Right. Yeah, it just seems weird like with how like their bodies fall apart constantly like when they're they like, move and things like that. It almost makes you think of destruction, but that doesn't yeah, quite fit I was thinking right the either. idea of entropy, ruin, and mm-hmm. that concept mm-hmm. of of things decaying because we know it's about self-mastery. 
And so yeah. my, my thought of it being something like a ruin sprint, if that were what it was, it would be this idea of controlled, po- you know, controlled power. Or almost like an equilibrium. Yeah. You know, a decay and, reju- and rejuvenation and decay and rejuvenation because. Um, but this, OK, so culturally, it's interesting. This group, they still really hold a grudge against humans because of the recreants. Um, now, one of the things it said in the copper mine, I'm not entirely sure where this came from, but it's fascinating, is they apparently blame the organized worship of honor for the death of their kinsmen. Um, now, maybe that's just because the, the Knights Radiant were considered, you know, a Voran thing. But I, but I'm not sure. Well, but, we know we know the Dustbringers are about self-mastery. Yes. Um, and so the idea, if you're focused on self-mastery, the idea of a generalized sort of religion uh, sort of being Would, the problem. Yeah. Cause, it could rub you the wrong way. Well, mm-hmm. especially if, you know, it resulted in, you know, the bunch of deaths of your friends. Mm-hmm. And especially it was self-mastery because it was said that, that the Dustbringers do not like even that name because they prefer the name the Releasers. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's the idea, I, th- I think, this is my theory, w- because their order was the one that had to be so uh, so self-controlled that mm-hmm. they would almost view it like everyone else was this out of control problem mm-hmm. and they'd much rather rely on themselves. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you're self master, you're probably more self reliant. And so you would be less likely to want to trust other people like you were saying. So that said, it's really interesting because, and we'll talk about the cryptics, crypt, cryptics in a minute, but all of the other orders of spren or types of spren i don't know what to call them they um they tribes yeah (laughs) tribes of sprint they seem to be very mistrustful of the cryptics Mm -hmm. but the ash sprint aren't they tend to actually get along fine with the cryptics and they don't really worry about them yeah but they apparently speak their own language and i'd forgotten about that a lot of them do speak their own language actually um, and, and now we've, we've talked about Celebrant. Apparently there are a bunch of Ash Spren wandering around. Yeah, Celebrant. that was where so we they're... first saw them with the mm-hmm. the bones, or the like the muscle yeah. pulling away from the bone. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, yeah. I bet that would look so cool. <laughs> the only um, the only Ash Spren that we've gotten a little bit of a scene with, um, like with a name even, is Spark, which is Malata's. Um, and we still don't know what's going on with her. And I mean, knowing knowing the history and kind of the opinion of the Ashbren makes Malata make a bit more sense to me. What do you but, mean? Just well, how, how she's how she's very very very. She's got a chip on her shoulder. Yeah, like the like where she's getting more of that from is probably talking to her Ashbren and getting it more of that way and getting those facts well, and opinions and things about things. Or that might just be who she is, and that's what attracted Spark to. Well, that's pos- yeah, but I mean, it, it just it makes more sense with that mindset and mm-hmm. knowing those different right. things. Like I hadn't thought that deeply about it. She fits it yet. with them. She yeah. fits. Yeah, they fit together. Yeah, the only other one that we know of is the the king of uh oh what was it the Reshi Isles? Uh, the, the Reshi Isles. Yeah. yeah. Specifically yeah. one of the Isles, but yeah. Yeah, the one that we met in uh, in. Oh my goodness! What's her in name? Rissen. Rissen. Thank interview. you. I was gonna call. I was gonna oh, say Ristaris. Yeah. That's no. That's a different thing. Yeah. No. <laughs> like, yeah. And so, it's just one of those like we we have so little to go on, but right. I'm very mm-hmm. fascinated by them. Just one, the look. Two, the power that they're going to have. We haven't really gotten to see division uh, mm-hmm. yeah. used by uh, by anyone really. Like the only person who showed anything was Malata, who used it to do a. a etching in a matter of seconds yeah yeah and so i'm very well, interested even, to see where it goes yeah and this this because the skybreakers the other ones who use division but they don't get that until like the fourth 
Um, yeah, very high. Ideal, I believe. Yeah. yeah. And it's because it's, it's a dangerous one. And we haven't seen any fused who can use it either, but we know that they have some some someone that can do it. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's going to be terrifying. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, taking a almost a complete 180 from um, culture-wise from the Ashburn, we've got the cultivation spread, <laughs> who is represented of course by <laughs> You by know. everyone's favorite void bringer, Wendell. I love Wendell. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. He's a forklift. <laughs> he is a forklift. It's true. You um, can multitask. These ones are really cool in the way they manifest in the physical realm. Because they're basically faces made of vines. Mm-hmm. And the way they move is they just sort of grow along and make another face. For some reason, and, I always think of them as claymation compared to everyone else. Well, I could see that because it, from looking at the picture, yeah, I could see how it looks, how it would lend itself well to claymation. I kind of see it as, because uh, the way they move is kind of like a strobe light. Because they just make a series of images of themselves as they kind of move along. But they're still images. Yeah. Um, but as a group, they do tend to be nervous and fearful. Um, my image is Piglet from Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> um, just, but the thing that's cool is they tend to be sort of long suffering. We've seen this very clearly in Wendell, mm-hmm. but they're still willing to be brave if they need to be. Yeah. I, there, there have been, there have been a few times in, uh, lift scenes where Wendell is just sort of kind of rolled his eyes and just been like, oh, fine. <laughs> you got to be brave again. Well, and it's interesting because unlike so, S- Syl ran off. Uh, mm-hmm. And so that's how we got her pattern. Uh, we now know was the second one that, that went to Shalon. And, yes. but, and so it was this idea of we were going to keep sending because the value's too much. Mm-hmm. This Wendell went as a decision by a committee, the the ring, whoever they are. Yes. Yeah. The other thing is they are one of two um, groups of sapient sprint who actually share their name with a shard. Yeah. You've got the mm-hmm. honor sprint and you've got the cultivation, cultivation sprint. Yeah. And it's really interesting because if you look... They're basically at direct opposites, I think. Um, because if if you have if you're looking at a circle, so you have honor sprint one, high sprint two, ash three. So I guess they're not a full full revolution around because they're they're three away on one side and, and six yeah. away on the other. But mm. I, I was thinking they were evenly away, but they're not quite. Um, but they do share the name with cultivation as honor sprint share with honor. So I find that very. Interesting. Which and so they consider themselves more aligned with cultivation for obvious reasons. Well, and they yeah. they call her mother as much as yes. the the honor the storm for honor as their father. father. Yeah. Hmm. Um. It's also interesting. They don't have their own settlements. So you know we've got lasting integrity in other cities for the honor spren. Um. There's the possibility of cities for the high spren. Um. And you know just e- each of them. But the uh, cultivation spring kind of tend to attach to others, which I kind of find interesting because they manifest as like these vine works. Mm-hmm. And so they're, they're like clinging vines. They're supported. Mm-hmm. They, you know, they integrate themselves into other ecosystems. Well, mm-hmm. and it, it fits because they also, they're the ones that are best at manifesting souls on yes. the cognitive side. And so it's one of those, even if other people maybe find their skitterish nature, you know, abrasive, they're mm-hmm. too useful to, to just, you know, cast out. Yeah. They made Absolutely. themselves valuable. Yep. Yep. And Wendell's a, Wendell's a gardener. He, yep. he, he had a lovely garden of chairs. That's right. The I, garden of I chairs. I love the moment where, uh, where Lyft has her mouth full of pancakes. Your garden chairs? <laughs> <laughs> Well, and it's just the idea of a vine that has a garden. Like, it's well, it's so bizarre. Mm-hmm. Well, and just, again, the culture, because the way the cognitive realm works is they have these beads that represent 
concepts of things in the physical realm. And by infusing stormlight, you can manifest them. And they've turned this into an art form Mm -hmm. where they met. It's not just, you know, stick in stormlight, make a thing. Which is kind of what Shalon does when 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 yeah. she's manifesting, but you know they see it and they're like cult. They're actually cultivating it, mm-hmm. um, and they they build them into different arrangements. And you know it's just it's fascinating. Didn't wasn't one of Wendell's chairs? Wasn't it like a thro- someone's throne or something? I think I it was. It was yeah. He was he was really proud of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. but <laughs> it's just such an interesting idea. It's like we'll grow this, we'll build it, we'll make it beautiful, we'll add something to it rather than just A is A. It's you know, the, it, it's art. Yeah, it's just a weird thing. Chairs. Mm-hmm. I hope okay. that, uh, sometime far in the future we find out now has a garden of silverware. <laughs> oh, other forks, but he is the shard fork, so he yeah. he rules over them with 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 an iron <laughs> fist. Um, okay, so let's move on to the ones that we've gotten the weirdest representation of: the mist mm. spren. These so things are creepy, seen, and these are the ones that I would put in the horror film. So we've seen. Two of these bonded to Radiance, very specifically. I mean, we've seen others, but there are two who stand out because they're bonded to Radiance that we know very, very, very well. Mm -hmm. And that's um, Renarin. And now... uh, I'm blanking on his name. Uh, Yeah. He's a a listener. He's a... Oh, Relaine. 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 I knew it was an R. I couldn't think of it. Yes. Yeah, Renarin and Relaine, um, because both of theirs have been, quote, enlightened by Sia Anat. Mm-hmm. So they're corrupted. They're not your typical mist spren. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, Brandon has actually said mist spren are actually the most willing to be enlightened. Both of those, uh, Gliss and Dreaming Though Awake is, Rela- is the name of Relaine's. They were both very, they were actually willing participants in this. They weren't corrupted by Sia Anat. They Chose volunteered for this. They, they were, were, they were they like, were, yes, I want They were converted. This. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so this whole thing that's going on with Sia Anat, what is happening? We oh, don't know. We don't know. <laughs> like, it's... the more I hear it, the more I'm actually starting to think maybe they should trust her, but that just feels wrong Mm. just the concept of trusting one of the unmade yeah it's i mean we don't even know what they are so it's very difficult to say Mm -hmm. and and we don't like we don't currently know her her loyalties we know she was working against uh old odium but she was she she was center stage in the plan to convert old odium into new odium so we don't know if she was on board with that idea or if she was tricked or if like oh this will serve my purpose so we have Mm -hmm. no clue where her loyalties lie yeah we also got a a a, uh, a viewpoint from her yeah and we still don't really know where her loyalties lie it's still hard to tell (laughs) it's really not clear the other thing i'm I'm curious about because we have gliss and then we have Dreaming Though Awake. These are two very, very different naming conventions. Yeah. Any idea why that um, might be? I wonder if it's either that there's just like two different tribes of Miss Spren or multiple it's, tribes. It's, which is possible. That, or Gliss is a shortening for something else. That could also be. So that um, those are my two immediate thoughts that way. We also got the name of, because uh, Stump is also a truth, truth watcher. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. And we all, we got the name of hers, but I can't remember. But it I it is. Know. I remember it is more of a, um, like more like Gliss. It's like Tium or T, uh, something. Oh, goodness. I'm looking it up. Thank you. <laughs> You're probably fast. I was already I was already on the page. Uh, let's see, Gliss Tumi. Tumi. Okay, I had all the letters right because I was thinking T I U M Tumi. 
but uh yeah I, so i'm not sure it, i th- i think that's a good hypothesis is that there's just like two tribes and or multi- more than more than two even possibly yeah, yeah. i mean cuz cuz there's enough of them probably that they don't have to have all the exact kind of name cuz if they all have the exact kind of name then they're going to run out of names well and the name almost reminds me of the way unkalaki names are it's where true. it's sort of like a, a sentence that describes something yeah, yeah. something well, the one thing we do know is that Gliss is the full name. It's not a shortening. Oh, it is? Okay. Oh, it, we yeah, that was, that. that was a word of Brandon. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah. But so, yeah, dreaming though awake is, it's it means something. Yeah. Yeah. Daydreaming. Yeah. It's kind of what it is. And mm-hmm. it the the thing that's interesting one just the look the the body of mist but then they have the the creepy mask um yeah which is again these are these are the ones that i would put in the horror film just i don't like it <laughs> uh but and it just it, they speak but it never changes it's just like what is this concept that's going on here one of the thing that's really interesting about them is that apparently Miss Spren weren't originally going to be Radiant Spren. Hmm. I don't know what that means, but that's something that Brandon said. Hmm. So, who knows? Care to speculate? I don't have enough information to speculate <laughs> on. Well, let's see. They're the Truth Watchers. It could be that they were too passive. Well, who? They, I mean, they may not have been. I mean, like there may have been another type of sprint that was going to be with the Truth Watchers. Yeah, yeah. It's. But, I don't know. I don't know. It's it's telling that at least on the uh, the physical side that they appear as like light through a prism. Uh, mm. The idea of illuminating something. Hmm. For the longest time, I thought that they were light sprint, and and so it that. Then when Tambor showed up, it really confused me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it all more confusing. It's also interesting just how, because, like, obviously we don't know because we only see really Gliss. But, like, when Renarin is going through his existential crisis because he thinks his father is about to break. Mm-hmm. And he, he has a whole, you know, my sorrow. I will give you my sorrow. Like, he, they seem to understand, be very empathetic towards their... Uh, the people they bond with, yes. they they seem to understand, try and understand how other people feel, which is very mm-hmm. different from the other orders. Like they, because they're so rigid. These ones are trying to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Like, well, like uh, we said, they they're looking for different perspectives. They're yeah. really curious and they want to see these new angles, which is probably part of why they're the most willing to be to be affected by Siat and not because it's a different angle. So I might as well try it, right? Yeah. Well, mm. and it, it, it makes it so they have a lot more in common, I think, with the the cryptics in that they're trying to understand. They want to understand why things happen. But this yeah. is from a very personal, individual angle, whereas the cryptics are much more trying to understand concepts as a whole. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm. Which is fun. Which so is, is I, I just realized it's kind of contradictory with the O's because... Everything with the, the, oh my goodness, what, Shalon's Order, what is it called? Light Weavers. Light Weavers. Light weavers. The, everything with the Light Weavers is just, is admitting truths to yourself. Mm-hmm. Like it's finding your, the personal truths that you weren't willing to admit to yourself. Mm-hmm. Whereas their spren are more about the, the bigger, con, the, the truth with the capital T as opposed to the, the, you know, the little T's. Yeah. Hmm. Never yeah. thought about that. It's interesting. So let's talk about the cryptics, actually, because they are actually they are next in line. Um, they're linked to the Light Weavers, and most of them live in a single city, which is I think is interesting. And they have no desire really to expand beyond that. Unlike you know the Honor Spren and other and others, they're just like we got our place, we're good. But let's just stay here. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and they move in packs. Mm-hmm. And well, to, which is which is why it, it was so horrifying when they were showing Shalon. up to Shalon in the in the way of kings. She had a you whole know, bunch because she's just seeing these 
black robed swirly faced things mm -hmm. just standing there and then she and it's you not know, she it's takes not a, even a robe it's a, a low poly getting, robe from n64 mm -hmm. days <laughs> And then they're getting closer, and then you know, and they're they're sort of doing the uh, the stalker cat um, thing, where you know you look the, or the, the weeping angels thing. As soon as you look at it, stop moving. Sorry, the fact that you they said stalker cat. Now I'm thinking of the movie like the sail cat from that <laughs> music video. No, that's a very different step, different cat. But like you know, like the uh, the weeping angels, where they're still, and then you look away and you look again, and they're closer. Well, yeah, it doesn't Shalon's help. You can't see their feet. Pictures. You can't see their feet because mm -hmm. the robes are, are too thick. Where are your feet at, Blue Man? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like, just think of I just think of them shuffling about everywhere, and just they're sort of hovering as this little group. And it, oh, that's right. Shalon has the drawing at the bottom where she theorizes a, a cryptic running would be hilarious to see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, and we've seen a picture of it. Well, that's yeah. her doodle, who did it? it. Well, no, she Somebody... has she she has the little doodle at the bottom of her picture. Yeah, I think, that's, that, what I think I was... that's what it is. It's her her imagining. Yeah, what it's they like look got like. these really stiff arms. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, and it and like you look at it and it's got this just sort of a. Yes, it's a, it's a very Scooby Doo run. Mm -hmm. I think that's the. Oh, I think that man. might be the exact pose Fred takes in his running animation. <laughs> It's, oh, it's, I don't know. And then the fact that culturally they all have the same name and they have to be explained pattern. to them. Yeah, no, it, no, you it can't always all be translates pattern. to the same. What are you talking about? Yeah. I am a pattern and this is also a pattern. pattern. <laughs> um, but it's interesting. They have this just very negative reputation mm -hmm. among all the other sapient spren, except apparently the ash spren. Um, but really, they're content to just sort of listen and learn. So there's, there's got to be a reason they've got this reputation. But I don't know what it is just yet. I think they're probably viewed as reckless. Hmm. Um, because the fact that they're willing to keep going back to Shalon after she's already killed one, and yeah. Pattern assumes... He's gonna well, die. I'm gonna die. Yeah, he's like, well, it'll be fun along, you know, and fun along the I think way. But let's do it. The other orders of Spren, they're you know, we know Ash Spren aren't aren't keen on it, but they sort of they also seem to have a leave me alone, very live and let live. Mm -hmm. That's um, true. But the, but the other orders are sort of like, I don't know about these guys. They're weird. Mm. And Maybe they a, just think they're creepy. I mean, well, they got the super long fingers. Oh, well, yeah. But there's no reason that Spren would find long fingers scary compared to people. Why? Long fingers I think scary. they would. I think it somehow goes through. There's like <laughs> something, something wrong about that. Hmm. Like, you got to think. It's, it's got to be really hard for them to to like but, hold things between their their fingers just look how long well i mean pattern are. does make comments about hands he's like it's so fun to have hands again or, or feet or whatever else it is that he well and he's just fun it's interesting though because in even though they've got this bad reputation the other sprints still take note of them like the cultivation sprint started going and looking for radiance because they saw the cryptics doing it. Mm. You know, that's sort of confusing, but interesting to me. Because they're, they're the creepy kids in school and everybody else doesn't want to associate with them. But when they see them doing something interesting, they want to copy them. <laughs> so, suddenly, I'm just picturing the cryptics as just the goth kids who are... Oh, like, I know. That's what I just kind of came in. Yeah, well, what, uh, what they are, I think what it might be is because they do push the boundaries a little bit and mm. it's the idea everyone's always uncomfortable with the person who's willing to push the boundaries but pushing the boundaries is also where you find the useful things and so when you see someone who pushes the boundaries and it yeah. looks like they're getting somewhere it's like well, maybe then i gotta do. i gotta look into it at the very least mm. and so that whereas they throw yeah. themselves at it and pay the price because testament's dead uh, the everyone else starts ish. tiptoeing in. She's only mostly dead. I mean, we, no, we it's just someone else not involved in this at all, Bill. No, 
I mean, she, if we have hope for Maya, then there's then dead. there's a hope for Testament in my mind. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, suddenly we're gonna have uh, Shalon and Radiant dual wielding. <laughs> I don't like it, but that's because I've been trying to get uh, Kelsier to get the one to be the first one to dual wield. So. <laughs> oh, see, I thought Kelsier was gonna be dual w w wielded, because he was gonna <laughs> make a bond to become a. Kelsier uh, would be the first blade. person to figure out how to uh, how to go. manifest himself as a weapon. Oh gosh. Yeah. Kelsier will find a way. <laughs> Kelsier is a soul eater. <laughs> there's always another secret, right? Oh. Uh, uh. I don't. That'd be hilarious. Is Hoyd and him are finally having their big sword duel, and it's like I have a revelation. I, something I'm not telling you. What? I am not left-handed, and Kelsier's like, all right. I have something to tell you. What? I am a left-handed sword. What? <laughs> then he just transforms and oh. then an electric guitar plays in the background. Ash Mount explodes. Sorry, what? So, Amy, Spren. you talked about, uh, you know, some of the Sprint having their own language. Mm -hmm. The cryptics have their own language and it's a series of clicking sounds. And my immediate thought is it's some sort of binary. Well, I mean, they do do the math thing a lot, so exactly, and that that's so, seems that's like so I'm fits. thinking it's like a binary code almost that there is there. See, I, I was thinking Morse code, something like or that. Or Morse, Morse, or yeah. But it's something, it's I mean, it's definitely. I mean, Morse code is just on off, as right. well. Which is, yeah, it's a form of binary. That's kind of a <laughs> trinary because it's off, on, and long. Oh yeah, because yeah. it's got dots. Because off is the spaces between the. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, but then, like you said, because of that language, their names all translate into pattern. <laughs> that scene, I don't know why, but it cracks me up. It's, it's the funniest idea of, could you give me some space? And the fact that they all lean, like, take a step back, but then just lean forward <laughs> because of how rigid their, their clothes are. Like, I imagine they're being held up by the clothes themselves. Oh, yeah, yeah. They remind me of some sort of uh, of show where there are aliens who are trying to be to act human. Alien Resident. Oh, yes. I watched that, yeah. and it's it was hilarious. There were some, yeah, some not like, family-friendly parts. Have you ever, have you ever parts, read the, but... the webcomic Strange Planet? That's with, like, the aliens, and they changed the... They like talk about purring is like the animal vibrates. Yes, exactly. Things it's, like it's that. Just this, and it's just this describing everyday things in a very weird. skewed angle. But then you look at it and go, no, I know what they're talking about. They're just saying it in a really weird way. And so, and and so it's, it's just like you can tell what they're trying to do, but they're not quite getting it right. And so it just makes it's very familiar, but it still makes you uncomfortable because mm -hmm. it's just off. Yeah, just off enough. And that, that just sort of, that's what cryptics kind of remind me of. You know, because for the longest time, we just had pattern. And then suddenly we have this trip into, um, into Shadesmar. And there's a bunch of them. In a and pack. they're all just as weird as the other. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. That this oh. is one of the first times he's shown the, the, he, the rule that shows the rule. That mm -hmm. they're kind of all like this. Yes, pattern is absolutely a cryptic through and through. <laughs> yes, it's sorry. Oh, I was man. just looking through the names. The I think we have the most names possibly of cryptics. I, I mean, clearly they, it's them or the the honor spread. But one of them I didn't realize. Omament. What's an omament? Um, spell it. Uh, I don't know. or maybe it's ornament. I can't. T let me click on it. Oh, it's, never mind. It's ornament. There's just okay. My, it's probably art okay. related. Yeah, it is. Well, because the names are mm -hmm. testament, pattern, design, mosaic, motif, ornament. Mm -hmm. What I would love is I've I've seen people cosplay as as cryptics or pattern, and it's awesome. But I would now that we mentioned they travel in packs, I would love it if we got like a group of people being that cryptics would be together. So awesome! That Just would be weird. amazing. Oh, that would be wonderful. Someday I want to make a cryptic, and it, but the only thing is, is they're all tall, and I'm not tall, so I'd feel sad that way. But it'd still be fun. It almost reminds me of uh, the Coneheads. Oh, yeah. And like, the, <laughs> oh, the people in um, 
Or, th- or Third Rock from the Sun. No, not Third Rock from the Sun, but the Galaxy Quest. Uh, yes. And I yes. can't remember what they're called, exactly. but, th- but the they, aliens they move that in, way. They move in packs as well. They do. There's there's a group at um at Fanex That's every exactly year. It. And they yeah. and they are so they're like spot on with the way they act and everything and it's amazing. They stay like in characters every time I see them and it's oh it warms my heart every time I see them. It's amazing. Plus so. one of them is Rain Wilson and that's just <laughs> awesome. <laughs> AKA Dwight Schrute from the office. I hadn't realized that. I'll have to look for him next time. Okay, so next on our list, we've got the Ink Spren. Mm. We know very little about the Ink Spren. Yeah. We've only seen two Ink Spren, really. Like, we've only had a real interaction with two Ink Spren. You know, and that is um, Blended and Ivory. Mm-hmm. And we haven't seen much of Ivory because like, we, we've seen more of yes not referring to him or things than mm-hmm. we, we, we've seen him. a few moments um and then if you read the have you read the deleted scene i think i did but it's from been a where, minute where, since i read from it. from yesna's perspective when she um when the ship is attacked and she steps into the yeah, cognitive realm it's just been a long time since i've read it so i've forgotten parts of it yeah so there, so there's some interaction with ivory there um as well as in oathbringer she chats with him a bit about Renard, during the battle with Renard, and and all, and then of course we see her meeting him in uh, the the prologue. The is it oh. the prologue? Yeah, yeah, the Gavilar prologue. The pro no, not the, but yeah, well, the, the, the yes, the prologue from Oathbringer. Mm. No, Oathbringer. Or, no, her prologue is in uh, Words of Radiance. Oh yeah, there's yeah. too many. Can't keep yeah, track of them a lot. anymore. I find it interesting that they can't change shape and they're the, uh, they're the embodiment the of, of the else callers who they seek knowledge. Are, well, and they also are, um, soul casters. Yeah. Mm. And it's, so it's interesting that they don't change their shape at all, That they're, they just change their size. Um, very, very, uh, Ant-Man style. And it's interesting to me of that because they're trying to find knowledge and it's the idea of this rigidity and the uh, truth. Yeah. Well, and I think that one of his quote, Ivory's quotes is, uh, I think it was like, Yesna is Yesna. And and he's Mm -hmm. trying to say something like you're, you're, you know, this is very, uh, very you thing to do. Mm -hmm. And it's just this concept of, I am not something else, you know. I'm not this thing that changes, you know, shape. It's because I, I am ivory, and this is what I am. Yeah. Well, and, and it, that's a lot of their their speech pattern revolves around various forms of the verb to be. Yeah, you know, a a traitor is instead of not there is saying a traitor. there's a traitor here. It's a traitor is this exist this you know it, a lot of the um, the concept of the I think therefore I am. Yeah, I was going to say they have a lot of the sort of that mathematical transitive p- property where it's like what the first law of mathematics is A equals A. Mm-hmm. And it's like if it exists. That's the then reflexive is, property, isn't it? Or, or yeah, then that no. moves on to if A equals B and B Commuted. equals C. Then I'd have to double check. I can't remember all the names for it. But it's just that very basic concept of something is what it is. And it's what makes a very poignant moment when Yasna goes to kill Renarin and then she doesn't. And Ivory says, it's like, this is right. And it's like, it should not be, but it is. And, and he can't understand it. But even though he like he's having this cognitive moment of cognitive dissonance where he feels something is correct, even though he can't intellectually understand it. Yeah. And it's what, and this is why he bonded her in the first place. Yeah, because mm-hmm. we don't know of any others yet. Well, no, because we found out that like he's he's a pariah for doing this. Mm-hmm. Reflexive property. A yeah. equals A. Sorry. Yeah. It's interesting. Also, they're the other order of spren that always have swords on them, though mm-hmm. the honor spren being the others. Mm-hmm. Even if the sword isn't actually attached to them, <laughs> might just be floating nearby. 
Yeah, no, they're. I, I want to learn more about the ink sprint. They just they seem really cool. Well, and the artwork for them is very. It's somewhere between Picasso and comic book. Um, they're very angular in their nature, mm-hmm. and it just it reminds me of really old comic book styles, like that pulp fiction style of of art, where it's it's very dramatic because they don't and- they don't have eyes. So they have the Batman eye thing going on. And they're, since they're one color, it's all about how the light reflects off of them. Well, and it's interesting. Their, their clothing and their weaponry has a very distinctive sort of Arabian feel. It or does, Persian yeah. or, you know, that, um, that Middle Eastern aesthetic. It, and so which you don't often see in a lot of um, modern fantasy. But, and that, that's, it's cool because that's something that Brandon looks to do a lot of. You, know, you have yeah. the Herdasians who are, um, who are inspired by Latin American cultures and, and the, uh, the Alethi have a very, uh, Brandon said they have, their visuals are de- derived from uh, Mongolian um, features. Hmm. And so it's, it's really cool seeing this aesthetic showing up okay we're getting close to the end um next would be light spren or reachers so we actually have spent a good amount of time with the reachers uh, because when shallan and adolin's party came into uh shadesmar and also in uh in oathbringer when adolin and um and uh, I'm blanking. Kaladin and Shalom. Azure. Oh, that's Azure. right. Oh, yeah. yeah Azure. Um, first come in, they ride on, you know, a Reacher ship. Mm-hmm. Um, and it makes sense. The, the uh, Reachers are the sailors and explorers in Shadesmar, which really fits well with the Will Shapers. Yeah. You know, because they're the ones who want to go out and explore and find new things and be free. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, um, they seem, at least from the ones that we've met, most of them also seem very conflict averse. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not not that they're un, they're scared or unafraid or afraid. It's more they just don't want other people to get into their business. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That I'd almost I'd almost classify them as sort of autonomy spread of of anything else. Don't make waves. It's literally, it's what they do, though. <laughs> no, they ride the waves, which also makes sense. Just, just sort of ride the wave and get to the other side. Um, again, they're they're another group that's common in Celebrant. They work as merchants, money changers, and dock workers there. Um, now they really, really, really don't like the nail bond, which makes Tambor very much a an exception. Yeah, it's well. It makes sense though that because bonds tie you down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's one. Well, of- and 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 they have also seen. You know, they seem to really take note of what happened. I mean, we see uh, Tambor's grandfather is a dead eyes, mm. yeah. um, who's just sort of kept in the the hold of the ship. I can't remember the name of the ship. I wish I could. Uh, it, was, it was Captain Ico, I remember, for mm-hmm. some reason. Captain Ico, yeah, that's right. But, you know, they see this and they're just like, we've already seen what happens. We're, we're not going to shun you, but we're not going to trust you. Yeah, they, they will work with you, but they're going to keep their distance and not get too involved. Well, it's, it's they have sort of a oh, what's the word for it? Uh, they're, it's not that they're okay with it, but they're they're accepting of that this is they're resigned. They're oh, resigned, resigned to it. Yeah. yeah, resigned to it. There we go. That's a good word for it. Um, it's just they've got a very pragmatic outlook. Yeah, cause it's, they don't seem to hold too big a grudge over. Like they're they're bitter about it, but it's also. They seem to understand the ones that did it aren't the ones that are here, even mm-hmm. if we yeah. think that it'll just it'll just happen again. 
Mm -hmm. It, It also makes sense just from their perspective that they're thinking over very long periods of time and in generalities. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't matter if a specific human isn't a problem because they're trying to think of it in long terms. Yes. Because Mm -hmm. they exist forever. This is what happened the last time we trust humans. So (laughs) we don't want it to happen again. So we won't trust humans. Yeah. And well, it's especially poignant for, for the reachers since they don't want to be tied down it's, mm-hmm. it's sort of like the parable of the kite, though, where it's the tension between the the string, the human, and the and kite the, that lets the kite soar. Right. Um, and you so, cut the string and it crashes to earth. Yeah, and so they don't want to be tied down, but at the same time, there's all this stuff that's happening around them. They're, they're, uh, I know a lot of people who are like this. They don't want to be involved in things because it takes too much time. But the problem is if you ignore a problem for too long, it grows bigger and you gotta you gotta confront it at a certain point. You can't mm-hmm. just be uh you know, just being blown about by the wind at some point you gotta you gotta steer the ship. And Right. Yeah. And for them, obviously with them, sailing metaphors are probably uh better. Mm-hmm. Well, and they use Luxprin to do to do that. Yes. The, the Mandras. And they're huge. <laughs> well, and there's something special about Mandras. We don't really know what quite what it is just yet, do we? I don't think so, no. I thought it was that they are the spren that bond to the, the well, they, great they shells. Are the ones that, they are. Oh, that's right. The yeah. great shells and the sky eels and basically anything that needs to be kind of lifted. lifted. Yeah, Here we they, are. They I deal found with the, the gravity. Uh... Mandras are the spren who bond with great shells, chasm fiends, and larkin, preventing them from being crushed under their own weight. This was discovered by Bavomar, blah, blah, blah. Mandras are different. Locations can be different size and strengths, and a great shell may need to return multiple times during their life cycle to bond additional mandras so they can continue growing. That's mandras right. seem to with... avoid the rules of physics. Because Chiri Chiri needs to go and get some Lux Right. Yeah. So I tried to find Ico's ship, and it didn't list a name. Of okay. the ship, so I don't know what it's called. There was also something interesting with them where the mandras sort of fade in and out of Shadesmar easily, and so their right. ship has multiple mandras. Just in case, in case one of them. Because one of them just sort of fades out. It's like, all right, it'll be back later. The <laughs> you got backups. Yeah, you got got to have backup generators. Yeah. I kind of think They're of it as sled dogs almost, but they have to mm-hmm. cycle them in and out. But they cycle themselves, so... Do we know why they're called Reachers? Mm-mm. I think it's because they're reaching. They're they're it's going for the, out for the next horizon, or yeah. I, I think okay. I don't think it. I don't think we have a canon reason for it, but I, yeah. that's sort of how I always. Uh, I okay. always took it. Feels on theme. So all right. So the the last one that's actually got a, a regular population is the Peak Sprint. Um, and they, they're the ones who bond with the stone wards. Um, physically, they seem to have a lot in common with the Unkalaki. Which makes sense. Would, would you agree? The idea of peak spren. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, I mean, even like to a, the point that when we met the, the peak spren in, uh, in Rhythm of War, and we got to see one up close for the first time, the, the actual voice pattern that was used in the, the book was... The mm-hmm. Unkalaki. was very similar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, because we don't know of any other people that you'd live in the peaks very much other than the Unkalaki. Mm-hmm. So it makes sense that they would kind of develop together in a sense. Yep. Again, you know, putting forward the pet theory that Rock is going to become a uh, stone ward. It just fit, fits. <laughs> it's also very interesting how they're their skin tones and uh, e- even the textures. It's just, is anything you can come up with for a, a rock. It uh, seems volcanic to me. Well, cause some of, some of them are as smooth. Like I think there's a note on the thing where he talks about some of them are as smooth as, uh, I think it was obsidian. Ba- yeah. Obsidian and others are as porous as, uh, as, uh, as, pum- as pumice. Pumice. Mm. Like, it, yeah. it, which would, if, if that's the case, 
the pumice ones would float, and that's funny. Um, <laughs> except that again, they're spren. So yes, physics. Is... So they do what they want. Yeah. <laughs> no, but the uh, the fact that like they have these, like you can see this molten thing underneath them. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like very, there's just sort of an a surging energy underneath, like a like a magma. Yeah. Um, now they, unlike a lot of the other um, breeds of Spren, um, they separate into their own individual tribes, and they actually have rivalries between those tribes. <laughs> so they seem to be a bit more um, individual in their behaviors. Um, you know, because we were talking about with the Honor Spren, they. The honor sprint all kind of followed a path with another group kind of breaking off to follow Sill's example to bond windrunners. Mm-hmm. But um, the peak sprint, we actually see a couple of the pink sprint kind of peak sprint, not pink sprint, kind of debating um, the best way to handle, you know, the whole situation. You know, who do we fight with? Who do we help? Mm-hmm. Um, all that stuff. Which, again, you don't see a lot of that kind of disagreement between the other orders or breeds or whatever of Spren. Yeah, Yeah, with everything else, it's very cut and dry. It's like Mm -hmm. Pattern, he's totally in sync. Uh, But Sill and Ivory are socially cut off from their, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they've been ostracized for their decision. Mm -hmm. It's either, you know, get in line or get out. But then the peak sprint are just like, okay, this is what I think. What do you think? And the, you know, they kind of live and let live and decide what they want. Yeah. Which again feels very unkalaki. I think they and would then, be my son's favorite kind because he's obsessed with volcanoes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then we have our last group of sprint who are the most their own thing disparate amongst (laughs) themselves because there's only one of each and each of them is very different we've got the unique god sprint essentially you've got the storm father the sibling and the night watcher Mm -hmm. i did not know what to put in the show notes for them because they're so different and so culturally they don't have a unified culture well they don't even really have a society like exactly they they like the, the only one that seems to interact with any of the spren is is the storm father yeah and i mean i imagine the sibling interacts with some spren here and there but you don't see it yeah mm-hmm. and part of that could be because the sibling is just so private and still and lick, well, like the, much, the sibling's been asleep yeah it's much well, more and, childlike and everything too so. and licking mm-hmm. their wounds over you know whatever happened with ba auto mishram that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm caused it's hurt. hurt now here's the question so there's the theory and I, i'm i'm a subscriber to it the idea that there were 10 great spren and that's what the unmade are are these great spren that were big pieces of uh right of honor and cultivation and the siblings basically the last one right so the yeah the storm father and the the night watcher are directly tied to each of them and then the others are sort of the children of them yeah Yeah. so if that's the case is it possible we could get a bondsmith with one of the unmade i think that's very possible yeah it would yeah not for perhaps well it's just (laughs) the the nature of it, it it reminds me of of the like because dalinar was very close to the thrill Mm-hmm. And he even like you know he treats it like he would a pet, and I wonder if part of it is they might have had bondsmiths in the past, and what like why are some of them more sentient than others? I'm wondering if it's when they were corrupted, did they already have a bond going on, and so the thrill is animal like because it didn't get a bondsmith. The other question, if that's the case. Are there other cities that would be tied to each of the um, the unmade? While possible, because um, I don't know. Because there's it... talk of the Dawn cities, you know, like like uh, Kolinar and 
is and the like. Is uh, Urthiru one of the Dawn cities? I don't recall. Let's see. Dawn mm. city. Research Deep. with Cosmere Studies. Live. Da, 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 da. He's Russia on the origin. Don Singer. No city has yet been confirmed to be a Don city. Yeah, okay. So we don't know. It'd be an interesting idea. Mm -hmm. And it's, mm -hmm. it's one that I, but just because the nine that keeps repeating with the, mm -hmm. the, the void spread, the fact that it's just one off of the 10 it could just Feels, be symbolic. Yeah. It could just be symbolic, right? It very well could. Um, but we've seen comparison. numbers tied to different, um, different shards before. Ten yeah. is honor. Sixteen is uh, preservation, etc. Yeah. And so, but at the same time, it's just it's interesting to me that it's always one off. It just feels like it's because of this, mm -hmm. and the fact that. Whenever they shut, they they corrupted the sibling enough so that the powers got shut off for all the 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 radiance, um, mm -hmm. except for the gravitation's uh, surge. Well, basically, uh, the one that is tied directly to honor, the one that yeah. is tied directly to cultivation. And so it's just interesting to me that that's the case, especially because. With the with the void bringers, they can they only have one power. They don't have multiple. Yeah. Um, it's so it's interesting to me that there's that relationship, mm -hmm. and it just it feels like there's something there. I I can't quite say what it is, but it just feels like there's something there. Mm -hmm. mm. Yep. Yep. Oh man. Sprint is a fa or just a fascinating concept. They're crazy. About They're concepts. So cool. Yeah, the concept of concepts. <laughs> so meta. Sentient meta Sprint. Hmm. Well, we love hearing from our listeners, so please keep on sending in questions. You can ask us about the Cosmere. You can drop us your ideas for topics that you would like us to discuss during the show. And while you're at it, please give us feedback. Tell us how you think we're doing um give us you know just let us know what you like about the show what you think we could improve on um please be kind constructive criticism <laughs> please um as well as any interesting theories you might have about what's going on in the cosmere you can send any of these questions suggestions theories whatever in a concise email to cosmere studies gmail.com and hopefully we could read that as part of the show we do have a P.O. Box as well. That's the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, P.O. Box 970063, Orem, Utah, 84097. In addition to the podcast, we each have our own personal projects that we're working on. So, Jordan, why don't you start us off and let us know what you've been up to? Uh, well, mostly what I've been up to is playing way too much Metroid Dread. And frankly... There's no such thing as way too much. That game is amazing. Fr frankly, everyone's lucky that, that this entire show didn't just break down into our review, me and Bill's review of Metroid <laughs> Dread, because we just lost an entire weekend to that game. Holy crap, it's so good. I watched, I watched my husband play parts of it so far, so I watched. So I, I was part of it in a way. Yeah, it's, nice. it's good stuff. Uh, highly recommended. But no... Uh, twitch.tv slash splice stream uh we've been doing a lot more of the amiibo raid boss tower texas blade actually uh tried to tried to climb it he can back up it is a tough challenge so if you're uh if you're into smash brothers you should come on uh on thursday check it out i think i think you're gonna be impressed he complained that you made him him wait his turn like he wasn't special <laughs> <laughs> nobody's special we can't show favorites, right? Everyone dies. Uh, Amy, how about you? What, what have you been up to and where can we find you? Um, so I have not been doing much on social media things, but I am still there. Um, my Facebook is Coincidence Cosplay and Props. My Twitter is at Coincidence Cosp because my name is too long. My Instagram is at Coincidence underscore Cosplay. And I think I'm going to start moving away from Etsy because Etsy charges a lot of fees. So... Very soon, I'm going to try and make sure that my website, www.coincidencecosplay.com, has my stuff for sale instead of Etsy, because uh, 
Um, and my husband's website for Magic the Gathering deck building is deckplan.io. So if you want to check that out, it's great. Um, so I am, my children are having me make them Halloween costumes and they picked like two random Pokemon. So I'm going to be Ash, sort of. And nice. then my kids are going to be to the Pokemon and I'm going to take my dog around because she freaks out when people knock on the door. So she's going to be Pikachu <laughs> and it's going to be great. Wonderful. So that's what I am doing is making costumes and I, I've actually filmed some stuff. So hopefully I will actually put stuff on my TikTok, which is coincidence cosplay um, of me fixing up the gloves for Ash and then hopefully other things too. But yeah, that's it's, I'm not great nice. at making videos. So that's me. Cool. As for me, I've got my other podcast, uh, the innkeeper's table. I do that with my buddy Dylan and we talk about board games because board games are wonderful. Um, we have new episodes coming out on Friday mornings. The most recent episode was about logic and deduction games. Um, not to be confused with social deduction games. This is more along the lines of ruling things out and finding, you know, just taking a few clues and using that to determine a lot more. Would that be like Mastermind? Mastermind would be an example. We actually didn't talk about Mastermind, but that would definitely be okay. an example of one. Um, and then the next episode that we've got coming out is a game spotlight on a game called Alchemist, which is actually sort of a hybrid between a worker placement game and a logic deduction game. So um, you should definitely check those out. We also have uh, board game reviews over at www.innkeeperstable.com. And I occasionally will also post about games on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram over at, at Innkeeper's Table, or there's also at Innkeeper's Table Podcast. Um, so for those of you who want to support the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, but you can't become patrons, we would love it if you just let your friends know about the show. Spread the word. And don't, of course, forget to subscribe to the podcast or to like and subscribe over on YouTube.com slash Cosmere Studies. I said or and to like and subscribe over on YouTube.com slash Cosmere Studies. Do all of it. And if you would tell us a good review wherever you listen to us, we would love that, too. Um, all right, guys. Final thoughts on Sprint Society. It's complicated. <laughs> I just don't know where Brandon comes up with ideas like this. <laughs> it's so it, it's one of my great concerns about any sort of adaptation of the the Stormlight Archive. I don't know if anyone is going to be able to properly convey the just the the how much the spren are just everywhere and do it properly mm -hmm. that just sounds mm -hmm. like it would be p a pain of attention to detail that just would not fly the special effects people budgets. would hate you they'd be like i hate you so much <laughs> mm -hmm. no it's it's true um yeah Special thanks go to our patron producer, Mims Laundry Service. There are several ways to kill a person without leaving a bloodstain. With our help, you'll feel like you know them. In addition to the live episodes of the show that stream on twitch.tv slash innkeeper's table every two weeks on Monday nights at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern, listeners can find our videos on YouTube or audio versions of the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and just about any other service that carries podcasts by searching for Cosmere Studies. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook under the profile at Cosmere Studies. And if you have any questions, feedback, or suggestions for the show, email them to CosmereStudies at gmail.com. In our next episode, we're going to be discussing the death rattles from the epigraphs of The Way of Kings. So join us for the live recording on October 25th, 2021 at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern at www.twitch.tv slash innkeeperstable. Until then... On behalf of Amy, Jordan, and myself, thanks for listening, and remember, there's, there's always, always another, another secret. secret. Inga. Come on.